the Cube presents Outside the Box, brought to you by the LCCC Communications Arts Department. On Outside the Box, we debate and discuss the issues that shape the campus community. Now let's meet our host, Layla. In 2019, former city councilman George Brown was elected as mayor of the city of Wilkes-Barre on a platform of what he calls total leadership, guiding the city through one of our country's biggest public health disasters, a stalled economy, and social unrest. George Brown has proven that he can weather any storm. Today, Mayor Brown is here to talk more about how his total leadership has made Wilkes-Barre the thriving, diverse community that so many LCC students are proud to call home. I'm Lalaj Johnson, and today I'm joined by my co-hosts, Crystal Torres, Bobby Brenner, and the Mayor of Wilkes-Barre, George Brown. So, Mayor Brown, you briefly can you briefly describe for us what your job entails? Sure. Well, <clears throat> as the Mayor of the City of Wilkes-Barre, just about every department reports to the Mayor. What I mean by that is the Police Department, Fire Department, Department of Public Works, City Hall employees, the only people that do not report to the mayor is city council because they're independently elected and the controller position. So basically my office leads the city in all the different parts of the city that we help the citizens with, whether it be fire, police, or DPW or anything else uh, coming to the business office. All those folks do report to the mayor, but I really consider it a team. It's the mayor's team. It's right. not that the mayor is leading everyone. We work together. In a collaboration. Total collaboration, correct. Alrighty, so our first topic is economics. And we've noticed a boom in new businesses in the area. Is this a possible indication of population growth for the city? Yeah, there's definitely a population growth. We feel that there's roughly 50,000 residents in the city of Wilkes-Barre. Now that's contrary to the 2020 census because a lot of people did not sign up for the census for right. whatever reason that may be. But we see a large increase in the amount of uh, garbage we're picking up, recyclables. We estimate well over 50,000. Economically, uh, because of the COVID situation, we lost roughly $4 million in revenue as right. a city. People have moved out or working from home now, which means that businesses are suffering. So we received $37.1 million in American Rescue Plan monies from the federal government. Oh, okay. My team and I put together a plan called Mayor Brown's Nine Point Plan to stimulate growth, but also to help people that were adversely affected by the COVID situation. Okay. So if I can elaborate, uh, some of the programs that we put together was, we mailed out 8,460 stimulus checks to low income people in this, that reside in the city of Wilkes-Barre. Oh, and on top of the federal? Yes, this is strictly from the city. $300 stimulus checks. May not seem like a lot, but $300 for people that don't have that money. I received phone calls from people that said, Mayor, I received my check today. I was able to put $300 worth of heating oil in my home. Yes. Or Mayor, I received my check today and I was able to go out and buy $300 worth of groceries. Yes, so that's, 8, that's 000, very important. Over 8,000 checks were mailed out. Something else that we started was um, I looked at the social agencies in the city of Wilkes-Barre that provide help for the needy, the homeless, uh, people like in those situations. Yes. There's 24 agencies located in the city and I gave those agencies $1 million. Okay. So 24 agencies divided up that $1 million. Another thing that we did was we reduced the uh, price of garbage bags in the city. Yes. We reduced the price of parking meters. Parking meters were two dollars an hour. I mean, who oh, wow. carries eight quarters in your pocket? Nobody. Yeah. So we changed it Not to a dollar. Not for parking anyway. Maybe for the bus. <laughs> That's right. So the other things we did was um, I created a program where if you want to buy a home in the city of Wilkesbury as your primary residence, we would pay seven thousand five hundred dollars of your closing costs wow. to purchase wow. a home. To we had forty-two new. Uh, homeowners because of that situation. That's great. Another thing was if you have a primary residence and it needs to be repaired, we paid $7,500 in repairs to those homes. 252 families took advantage of that $7,500 repairs. Now Amazing. you say, Mayor, how does that help the economy? Now we have, and by the way, you have to be a licensed 
contracted to take part in that. Yes. So think about that. 252 homes are repaired. They're Wilkesbury City licensed contractors. Permit fees, right? Right. Okay. The other thing I'm really, really proud of, we started something called the SPARK program. Mm. And I took a million dollars and we created a program in partnership with the Wyoming Valley Chamber of Commerce. They do all the paperwork. I supplied the million dollars. If you want to open up a new business in the city of Wilkesbury, it can't be a chain, but a regular business, I will pay your first year's rent. That's amazing for we so many, and especially for you, Crystal, who's, right. who's running your own sure. business. Did that's you take advantage amazing. of it? Did you take advantage of it? I have not, no. Well, it's but. still open. But uh, that way, if you open up a new business, one of the things you're really worried about is, how do I pay my rent? Right. Yes. So this way, depending on the number of employees that work for you, that determines how much we'll pay. The lowest amount we'll pay is $10,000. Oh, if you have one, that's, one so that's very good. Amount. Yes. Right. As it increases, it could go up to fifty thousand dollars. Really? So we have seventy new businesses that have located to the city of Wilkesbury through this be program because of the program. Well, that is good. That's very good for our economy. And right. we also uh, allocated money to increase the flood protection. Mm -hmm. We have several creeks that run through the city. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, the walls that hold that water in were built back in the 1920s. Right. The WPA program. We have spent millions of dollars in uh, rebuilding the flood walls and, and walls that were um, built over 100 years ago. So uh, this is the way that we allocated $7.1 million right. and it's given back to the, the residents. Right. Okay, that's, that's amazing news. Is there a deadline for the program or is... Until the money runs out. Now, <laughs> according to the federal guidelines, the American Rescue Plan money has to be spent or allocated by December of 2024. Right. Okay. But I'll tell you, all the other programs I mentioned, that money's been spent. The one program, which is called the SPARK program, we still had limited amount of money left. So if right. someone, student or anyone else watching this program wants to open up a business, Yes. I say contact the mayor's office and we'll provide the, the spark information or Greater Wyoming Valley Chamber of Commerce. Okay, that's great news for the business students here. Can you tell us about the business district if there's anything exciting happening there? Because we do see the local businesses a little bit closer to the square in downtown, but the industry complex, what's going on there? Yeah, well, there's a lot of stimulation coming from outside the area people that want to come to the area and are investing in a lot of our businesses, mm -hmm. a lot of our properties. Uh, last year we had roughly $150 million in new investments in the city. Wow. This year we're on target to at least meet that again. And what do you mean by that, Mayor? Well, that means people coming in, buying property, you know, remodeling the properties and opening up as new businesses, but also we have companies coming in. Uh, we have companies coming in with 100 plus employees right. that right. are taking vacant large buildings, converting them to manufacturing or distribution mm -hmm. and taking advantage of that. They'll, they'll be uh, qualifying for the SPARK program also. Okay. So it could be a very healthy shot in the arm for these new businesses. Right, right. and many jobs for the growing residents as well. And, and what we're trying to do also is enhance uh, quality of life in the city. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what I mean by that is we've uh, done several things over the last couple of years. We built a special needs park for people in wheelchairs and special. And then I have a special place in my heart for two people, for two groups. One is special needs, the other is veterans. Yes. So what we did was we formed a committee and on the committee are people that have special needs, relatives, children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews. Yes, I believe and one of our students was a part of that. She attended LCC, I believe her name is Liz um, Brittany. She was part of that. Lizzie. Lizzie, yes. Lizzie Bresney is yeah, a there you big go. part of that. Uh, and Lizzie is wonderful. She and her mother, Helen, are, are a big part of it. So she sits on my committee. So it's called the Special Needs Playground Committee. Anyway, what we did was we said, we want to raise $400,000 to build a special park for people like Lizzie in wheelchairs. Yes. All voluntary donations. Uh, and what we did was we actually raised $602,000. Uh, voluntary, just voluntary. everyone. Wow, that's amazing. So if you went to Kirby Park, which by the way is part of Wilkesbury, Kirby right. Park, it even is. though it's over the bridge, <laughs> it it's is part of Wilkesbury. Uh, but you'll see 12 new pieces of special needs equipment. There's two zip lines over there and yes. other pieces of equipment that people in wheelchairs can use. And you say, well, Mayor, you know, how is that important? There never has been a special needs park in Wilkesbury before. Yes, it's the only one. 
and I've visited it and it's very, very nice, very welcoming, very easy to access. And so it's really nice to have in the park. Kirby Park caters to a lot of different people, you know, people with the dogs, people with the kids. Having that in there definitely will attract people to the city more to see, okay, what else does wilkes -Barre have to offer? And in addition to that, uh, one of the people on the committee said, Mayor Brown, if we raise enough money, can you build like a shed? I said, well, what do you mean like a shed? Well, you know, like for your lawnmower. And I said, well, why do you want us to build a shed? Right, Bobby? I mean, why a shed? <laughs> so anyway, uh, she said, well, my nephew has uh, cerebral palsy and he wears diapers and, you know, he has to have a place that I could change his diaper. Oh. So we're not building a shed. We're building a brand new building at Kirby Park, right by the special needs park, right. hands free. So people that don't have the ability to use their hands right. can go into this facility. It'll be um, changing rooms on both sides, closed rooms where you can actually lay that person down on the table, the table rises up, you change the diaper or whatever. There's showers there. Oh, There's yes, that's gonna men's. make a difference for sure. Wonderful. Men's and women's uh, showers. Uh, all yes. hands-free bathroom facilities. So now, people that come to Kirby Park, special needs people, have a place that they can maintain their dignity by getting the diapers and other things changed in right. a closed room, but also, if necessary, have showers and bathroom facilities. So that's something that we added. Uh, but I also have to mention, this is a long question to your short, a long answer to your short <laughs> question, but I'm a talker. Um, no for building problem. a second special needs park. That's going to be at the bog, uh, which is called Evercore Field, okay. up in uh, Miners Mills. So not that's, too far. No, it's not. And that's where Challenger mm -hmm. Baseball is, mm -hmm. which is all special needs. You familiar with that? Yes. So when I threw the ball out last year, the first opening pitch, I said, we're building a second special needs park here. We're in the process of raising voluntary donations for that also. Okay. And the All One Foundation just notified me that they're going to donate two hundred thousand dollars. Oh congratulations. So they're a wonderful organization. Mm -hmm. When we first put together the first park they donated three hundred and twenty two thousand. Oh. So they really partnered with a half a million dollars uh, into two parks. Wow that's really good to know that you have so much support for these projects. It's not it's a community effort like you said. We all collaborate together as a community for the community and it's beautiful to see. Now also we build a skateboard park. Yes. And this is for skateboards, scooters, BMX bikes. And you folks were there we were. for we were. the grand opening, the was, ribbon cutting. It was very fun. A lot it's of people a, uh, came out. It's a park that we built all concrete. Mm -hmm. And it, it costs $450,000. But you know what? What a great investment because mm -hmm. you go there any time and there's people on that skateboard park. Yes. And they're enjoying it. They're maintaining it. They're making sure it's clean. I uh, think everyone is very... Um, involved with it, they feel a sort of responsibility for it. So it kind of brings the community together. Not only can we enjoy the sport together, but we have something to take care of together as well. Absolutely. That's right. The other thing we did was we built a brand new stage on Public Square. I saw it. Yes, like we did see Love it. it. Did you go see the Guess Who? I did not. Oh man, that was I a saw, great. Yeah, I read about it afterwards. Well, but did you the, see the Guess the, Who? I couldn't. 5,000 people were there. The, yeah, 5,000 people? I read about it. Yeah, there was, wow. there was definitely a big turnout. Yes. So it's but a the, beautiful stage. Yes, now, you may say, beautiful. Mayor, why are you spending money on these things? Tourism. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. We're bringing people to the city that now see the beautiful special needs park at Kirby Park. Yes. They see the beautiful skateboard park. And you know, the they, stage. they see the stage and all the things that we're doing to bring people out to the city of Wilkesburg. So moving on to the topic of education, as students, we're all very interested to know if there's any plans to accommodate possible new students to the area. Well, I always tell entrepreneurs when they come to the area, I say, you know, your workforce is going to be a wonderful, well-trained workforce. Yes. We have three colleges downtown in Wilkesbury. We have Wilkes University, King's College, and also Luzerne County Community College. Yes. That's where most of the workforce is going to come from, especially in technical type businesses. Yes. So we've also seen a large increase in the amount of students at the LCC downtown Wilkesbury campus. Wilkes University and Kings are also looking at different ways to introduce new programs to accommodate what's happening in the industries today. Yes. So that's ongoing. Okay, well that's good to know. More in the downtown, it's the guard insurance, which is always looking for additional help. Okay. There's Highmark, uh, there's M&T Bank, 
there, there's Geisinger. So a lot of those are the businesses that make up the main workforce downtown. Right. But in the city of Wilkes-Barre, we also see new companies coming in that may not be warehousing, but they may be manufacturing. Right. Okay. So that's all. There's a growth right there, uh, that, that a growth spurt that's coming into the city with those type jobs. And with more people commuting now on the pe public transportation, do you know of any plans to make that more accessible? Perhaps more buses, better times? Or if there anything in the works for that? Well, the buses are actually Luzerne County Transportation Authority. Yes. They're not owned or run by the city of Wilkes-Barre. But I can tell you that Luzerne County Transportation Authority is building a very large facility in Wilkes-Barre. It's a $64 million facility. We're looking at probably 160 new jobs coming to the city of Wilkes-Barre because of that. That's great news. And it's going to be a wonderful place to, you know, look at coming possibility, maybe some job potentials, but also it's going to increase and enhance that entire area of the city. Absolutely. With more jobs, more population. But we also have what's called an intermodal, and the intermodal is owned by the city of Wilkes-Barre. And that's downtown. Yes, that's I use it every day to get to school. You do? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you're familiar with it. But that's where the March buses come in from out of town, yeah. but also it's the main area, the hub for any transportation. Absolutely. And I do know there are those tourist trips to New York City. Do you think we could look at maybe tourist trips to Wilkes-Barre on the opposite well, spectrum? We would definitely be open to that. <laughs> uh, we're trying to enhance tourism in the city of Wilkes-Barre, right. as we had mentioned earlier in the last segment. Mm -hmm. Um, so we are doing a lot to promote that. The uh, city of Wilkes-Barre actually created a 60-second commercial that was enhancing things like educational, uh, you know, tourism, uh, places to live, all those type of uh, things that make a, a family want to move to the city. Mm -hmm. yes. It was so large that we cut it into two 30-second commercials. <laughs> and you could actually see those commercials on the Wilkes-Barre City website. Okay. And uh, they were done by a local company called Cole Creative. And uh, they're wonderful 30 second blips that show why you want to come to Wilkes-Barre, why you want to move here, why you want to work here, right. why you want to shop here. And uh, we really promote them. We've promoted them through four different cable companies throughout uh, parts of the eastern United States. And we've gotten phone calls. Mayor, I saw the commercial. I never knew that this didn't know anything about Wilkes-Barre. Now it's such a beautiful place. Right. But we're, we're trying to bring more and more people into the city. One reason was for the skate park was to bring people here so we could have competitions. Right. Skateboarding, scooter, BMXs. That would be very you know, exciting. Right. Yeah. Uh, mom and pop bring the, the kids to see grandma and the kids don't want to see grandma. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> they want to go skateboarding. Come to Wilkes-Barre Skate Park, you know, have them skateboard while they, mom and pop go see grandpa. Yes. Uh, but it, it really seriously, it's for tourism, to promote tourism in the city. I do think that all of this together will be very successful in doing that. And I'm excited to see in the coming years how the city of Wilkes-Barre transforms. Well, if you get on a skateboard, I'll get on one. How's oh, that yes, I like that idea. Never done it before and probably be better than me. <laughs> My wife will kill me when she hears that. <laughs> All righty, now seems like a good time to take a break. So we'll be back shortly. Please stay tuned. With more from Mayor Brown here on Outside the Box. does someone become the mayor of a city? One thing is for sure, it doesn't happen overnight. Mayor Brown, can you take us back to when you were first considering a, a career in politics? What made you make the transition from the background that you have in business? Sure. Well, as you said, I, I did come from a background of 38 years working for large companies, national, international companies. Uh, and I saw the way the city was going. And a friend of mine uh, was on city council. His name is Rick Cronauer. He's now a judge. Okay. And he uh, did not run again. So I thought, I'm going to try and run for city council. Now, the city is broken up into five districts. Right. And the council members are, are voted on di the districts, A, B, C, D, E. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you run for city council, you're running in that particular district. Okay? Right. It might be 8,000 total mm -hmm. population. The city has 50,000. So it's broken up into five districts. You have to be well known in your district, first of all, to be a successful city council candidate. 
And I was lucky enough to be well known because I was born and raised in Wilkesbury. Right. I raised my three children, and my grandchildren are in Wilkesbury. I imagine you were a good neighbor even back then. I tried to be. <laughs> I tried to be, be the nice guy in the neighborhood. But um, so I ran, and I was very successful. Okay. Um, so I, now I'm a city councilman for four years. I saw the way the city was going, and I had an ambition to become the next mayor. Another gentleman that was on city council with me, his name was Tony George, we ran against each other. Mm. Uh, Friendly competition. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Joni George won the mayor race by 152 votes. Mm. Okay. Now think about that. Out of the entire city population that voted, I lost by 152 votes. Mm -hmm. It's tough to take, it really right. is. Um, but you know, under Mayor George's leadership, I saw how the city was going. Um, the city was not doing well. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, with my background, I have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, and um, thinking I could probably try to turn the city around. Uh, Mayor George did the best he could, but I felt I could do better. So I ran against Mayor George a second time, and we were lucky. We took 80% of the Democratic vote. Congratulations. 80% of the Republican vote. Thank you. Congratulations. So it was a, a, a nice win for us. But when I became mayor, uh, I'm going to share a couple of things with you, okay? Sure, now you're going to think, sure. wow, how are you still here? <laughs> anyway, um, what happened was something called the COVID situation happened. Yes. All right? Uh, we were losing revenue because businesses are closing. And um, we lost about $4 million. Now, I took over a city that the prior mayor declared as distressed city status. Okay, the state did not honor that, but it was not in good shape mm -hmm. financially. So we have the COVID situation now, $4 million loss in revenue. Uh, what do we do? So I'm very lucky to have a great senior staff. Every day we meet at 11 o'clock, okay? So we looked at putting a plan together. Uh, we have a health department and only uh, 10 in the state of Pennsylvania. We have one of those 10. So now we're fighting the COVID situation. Our health department is trying to help nursing homes and other entities that were in need we actually provided masks to the hospitals because we had a, a supply of COVID masks. Uh, yes. Anyway, we're working through that problem. Bad enough, right? Yes. Right. No. You know what happens next? Well, by the way, we had to cancel the parades. Yes, you know, yes. Everybody was sad about that. Bad enough. No. The roof blows off the of city hall. Yes, the roof, remember that? Mm -hmm. How did it blow off? We had if you don't a, mind me asking. We, had a, we thought, thought it was a hurricane. Anyway, it came by. The roof blew right off the city hall like a oh sardine can. Oh, my goodness. Wow. You can look up and see the sky. So, Were you in there at the time that, uh, that I was happened? in a meeting. Okay. Okay. So anyway, the roof blows off the city hall. Okay? <laughs> Bad enough, right? Right. No. Oh, you wow. go down South Main Street, 11 telephone poles get knocked over. No power in oh, that no. whole area. Bad enough, right? It would seem so. No. <laughs> when we realized that the roof blew up and it damaged some parts of, well, my office was, was damaged. I'm on the fourth floor. Mm -hmm. The fourth floor was damaged. We realized that some of the flooring on the fourth floor was damaged. Got to repair it. Not bad enough. It was asbestos. Oh. We had to get the guys in the, in oh the you know. Oh, my goodness. In the suits. And yeah. All in. at once? This is, this is my first year. So Goodness now they gracious. come in and they, they had to replace the flooring in the second, third, and fourth floor. Bad enough, right? Probably no. not. <laughs> I'm say, fascinated. How can it get worse? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, my first year. The next thing that happens is um, the building is 125 years old. Okay? The elevator stops working. Now, there's no elevator, and I'm on the fourth floor. My executive assistant, Tyler. Yes was stuck in the elevator. Oh no. She went downstairs to get my lunch and she's on her way up on the second floor. The elevator stops. Oh no. And this poor young lady's stuck in there. So the fireman had to come down and actually get her out. She had to crawl out. The worst part is it's, the elevator's 100 years old, don't have parts for it. Right, there's no so way to just go to the local manufacturer. Yeah, you can't go to Lowe's and buy parts for that. Right. So um, we had to replace the generator. It cost me $58,000 to make parts to put in the elevator. Okay, so that's bad enough. Well, the elevator kept breaking. Yeah. So I had to spend $1.7 million to build a new elevator in addition to City Hall. 
Okay? Bad enough? No. Don't know what I did in my past life. <laughs> what happened is the HVAC unit dies. Oh, oh wow. So that's we have no hot. heating, ventilation, or air conditioning in the city hall. And it's four floors of people working on all four floors. Yes, not sustainable. And as a matter of fact, it's still not working. Even to this day? To this day, 90 degrees out, we got these little air conditioning going. <laughs> but anyway, so that I was my- I think we don't need to complain about our school anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're pretty well ventilated here. Like that that was my first year <laughs> as right. mayor. And, uh, but you know what, we, we got through it uh, because I have a wonderful team. Yes. I never take credit for anything, it's always, the Brown administration, the Brown team. Yes, and we can relate to that as a team here at the TV Club. In order for us to do what we do, we have to rely on each other. And the people that you rely on have to be reliable, and that is the key to success in anything that you're doing. You're exactly right. And I'm very lucky that the team I have, I have a great police chief, a great fire chief, a great attorney that works, we call it a solicitor, city solicitor, a great health department director. You know, I have my staff, uh, community Occupational Development Director. You know, all these people, they work together as a team. So if something comes before me, it's a major issue, we talk about it. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm not a dumb guy, but I'm not the smartest guy in the world. But when I surround myself with eight other smart people, mm -hmm. boy, I'm a heck of a lot smarter than I was before. <laughs> you start to rub off, yes. right? <laughs> so when I make a decision, it's my decision, good or bad, and I'll take the blame. Uh, but it, it's based on a lot of the input I get from my team. So anyway, that's my first year. Second year, third year, this is my fourth year now. And believe it or not, I'm running for re-election. I don't know why, no. but I'm <laughs> running for re-election. But uh, seriously, when I took over as the mayor of Wilkes-Barre, it was in very bad financial shape. So what I decided to do is, uh, over the last four years, I don't take $200,000 in salary and benefits. I don't know if you know that. Mm. Um, I'm allowed a certain amount of salary and certain benefits. Uh, I talked to my wife, I said, Marianne, the city can't afford this. So um, over the last four years, uh, I've given back $50,000 a year oh, that wow. I don't take in salary benefits. So That's the money that you could take for yourself. Money I could right. take for myself. And I'm not a rich guy, um, but you know, I couldn't see the city paying that to me. Things are changed now and eventually I'll get back to where I, you know, I should have been. But for that first four years, I thought, I gotta dedicate myself and some of my staff also, city administrator, same thing, he gave back money he's not taking, other people, because we all thought, let's get the city back on the right foot financially. Now we're doing it amazingly well, uh, the city's Wilkes doing Bear's well. Wilkes-Barre is very lucky to, have, to and, have that. And I've been lucky, four years we've not had a uh, tax increase, yes. which is pretty much unheard of. Mm -hmm. uh, four years, no tax increase. And um, we're lucky that because of the team I have, the city is a much better financial standing. And you can see it, and it's great to see. All right, so now that you've had a few years to kind of get your, uh, kind of get your feet wet as mayor, would you do it again knowing everything that you know now? Yeah, I, I would, Bobby, and actually I'm running again yeah. for re-election, as I said. Um, we were very lucky in the primary. Uh, we received 98.8% .8 of the Democratic votes, so, uh, you know, we're, we're very lucky that way. Um, I want to run one more term. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is I want to continue the growth that we're right. seeing in the Wilkes-Barre. Mm -hmm. Bring the city back to where people say, oh, I live in Wilkes-Barre. Oh, you do? Well, that's a great city. That's what I heard. It's mm -hmm. a great place right. to live, great place to visit, great place to work. So I figure one more term. Uh, and that way I can hand it over to the next man or woman that is the best qualified candidate and help them get, get elected. Um, I'm 72 years old and I don't want to do this forever. I have <laughs> grandchildren that I want to sit Oh, you wouldn't have known. Well, you don't look you. it. <laughs> and I want to sit on my back porch and rock my grandkids. Mm -hmm. but right. Yes, absolutely. Am I right? Yeah. Right, Krista? Yeah. So what, what I want to do easier. is uh, one more term. Get the city back on good solid footing mm -hmm. and then be able to work with the next person saying, here's what we need to do and, and yes. do it that way. So uh, yeah, I would do it all over again mm -hmm. in a minute. If I didn't run for mayor, I'd run for city council again because you love being able to help people. And when I was on city council, um, I did something differently than other council members. Someone called me on the phone and say, hey George, uh, you know, next to my house, there's a terrible person. They have high grass and weeds and there's, and there's all this stuff. I would go to their house 
and I'd sit on their front porch with them or in their living room. I'd say, show me what the issue is. Then if I called the mayor's office to get help, I knew myself what I saw, okay? So um, I did that tradition, untraditionally. Other people just make a phone call. Right. I wanted to see myself what was going on. So I started that and uh, the people really liked that because it was a face to face with their city council person. And I always say that to a new council member coming on, I'll say, make sure you have that personal interaction with people. Sure. Go Absolutely. to their house. Don't just listen to them on the phone. See what the issue is, because sometimes it may not be warranted. It might be a problem between two neighbors. You right. know, that's not the city situation. So um, I do that, but I love being a council member. I really did. I love being the mayor. I get up every day, I work out every day, and then I go right to work, and I look forward to that day. Uh, I'm the last one to leave City Hall at night, and a lot of times you'll find my lights on on a Saturday uh, right. because I just love this job so much. Dedication. And you know what else? If you can get something done for people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Uh, we paid, I think we spent about $7 million in paving roads. <laughs> the most compliments we got was for Wilkesbury Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a, ter it's a big road. You know, I just got a call today. Mayor, thank you for paving Wilkesbury Boulevard. Yes, You're I welcome. remember there was quite a lot of potholes at one point, and they're gone now. They're, it's a brand new road, it's, yeah. It's so shiny anyway, uh, new. when you can help people, you feel much, much better. Absolutely. Right. So yes, I, I would run again. And just to round out our conversation a bit, what is the biggest piece of advice that you give a student or someone who might be interested in running for politics? Don't listen to naysayers. Do not let any negative person influence your life. Absolutely. Whether absolutely. it's politics or whether it's their career choice. Now, if I can share a little bit about that. Sure, absolutely. I don't know how much time you allotted for me. I don't you. think you have too much more time, but. <laughs> all right. Uh, all, all through my life, I, I have been told, you can't do this, George. You can't do that, George. I'll give you an example. I always wanted to play football, okay? Well, George, you're not big enough to play football. You know, you're, you're not talented enough. Didn't listen to him. Played three years in varsity football, okay? Um, then I, I said, uh, wow, I'm a football player, and up on stage is this cheerleader, and she's really a good-looking cheerleader. Wow, I wonder if she'll go out with me. Well, I said that to my buddy who was a, a linebacker. I said, hey, you think she'll go out? No, she won't go out with you. No, nah, she won't go out with you. Right. She's too smart. You know, you're, you're a jock. You're a football player. So I asked her out. Guess what she said? Yes. No. She said no. <laughs> <laughs> she said no. Right? So I kept after her. And guess what? She finally said yes. Now, we were juniors in high school. Been together ever since. Aww. We're married 51 years. Congratulations. Yeah. How about that? You I gotta finally go got her to say, you hey, he's not a bad guy. He's a football it. player, but he's not a bad guy. Right. You know, I was not a great football player. There's so many guys that were so much better than I was, but I tried. And anyway, so when the naysayer says you couldn't play football, I tried. When they said this beautiful cheerleader won't go out with you, I don't care. Not only did she go out with me, she's married 51 years. Exactly. You and she's still beautiful, by the way. Then, right? um, <laughs> then um, I was working and you know, uh, supporting our family, and um, I, I decided to go to school. See, I was a non-traditional student, OK? Um, I went back to school, uh, and uh, it took me eight years to earn my bachelor's degree by going to King's College. George, you can't do that. You're working six days a week. You're working overtime. You're never going to get your degree. Well, guess what? Eight years, I earned my degree. Well, then I decided I'm going to go for my master's weekends, misericordia. You can never do that. You know, you're working six days a week. You have three kids. Guess what? Got my master's degree. So I didn't listen to people when they were naysayers. And they said, you, you're never going to do that. OK, so I guess what I'm trying to say is um, don't listen to people that say you're not good enough. Don't listen to people that say you're never going to get it done. In your heart and in your mind, if you know you can do it, do it. Don't let anyone say, and I'll tell you what, if you have any students that are having that problem, have them call me at City Hall, and I'll have a little discussion. I'll tell them they can do it. Right. But seriously, um, and I said this last week, at a, uh, I was at one of the keynote speakers at a high school uh, graduation, and I told the, the students this too. You're talented, you're educated, you're good people. Don't let the naysayers know, say no to you, and don't listen to them, because they're not going to be there in five years when you oh. achieve 
whatever your goal is. Right, exactly. Okay? And find a job that you love, okay? Yes. I, I, I worked in business for 38 years, I loved it because we were able to grow the businesses. I love working in the city of Wilkesbury as the mayor because I see the changes we're making. I love being at LCC as a trustee because I see what this college has done over the years and how it's growing. Largest college in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Yes. And I'm very proud to be a, a sitting trustee. So that's my, I guess, the best thing I could say to people, young people. That's uh, amazing advice. That's the, mm -hmm. that's don't, what don't everyone needs to hear at this stage in yeah. life when you're young and trying to figure out what you want to do and who you want to be, having someone tell you, hey, believe in yourself. Don't let anyone make you doubt yourself mm -hmm. is invaluable advice. So thank you. I needed to hear that myself. Don't ever <laughs> listen. And if you ever feel that, will you call me? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's all the time we have today for Outside the Box. Thanks again to Mayor Brown coming on our show today. Thank you so much. Join us again next time where we'll have the facts and the opinions that affect our campus community right here on the Cube. See you soon. Thank you for watching.